Hi, I'm Leslie Greening. On my last video, I discussed how I set up calendars in Microsoft Project. In this video, I'd like to go through the options I select for running my projects and why I use them. Now, here we've got Microsoft Project open. So once again, I will select blank project. Now again, it's defaulted to the task on opening. Uh, we want to select the file tab here on the left. And then we go down on the left hand side, right to the bottom, it's got options. So we click on that and it gives you quite a few options down here. Now the ones I deal with mainly are general and schedule. General, it comes up with uh, just a few features, backgrounds and that, a lot of formatting mainly. The one that I do make sure is selected um, correctly for my use, it's personal, but as you can see, if you look down the drop down menu, you can see a lot of different formats. Now I don't like all numbers like this, because like, if it's the 28th of January, that's fine, but if that said one stroke three stroke zero nine is that the first of march or is that um the third of january you have to stop and think about it so i'd rather have it obvious to me like this um, sometimes it may be useful to have the times especially if you're doing a lot of detailed planning and you literally go down to the um minutes so this, I'm happy with that selection. So really, as I say, there's displays, but it's just formatting. You may want to change the currency within the display if you collect costs within your plan. But the next one we really deal with is the schedule. So we've got work starting on the Monday, which is fine, um, but some places they do have it started on Sunday. Now, if we go to the time starts, I don't worry about that too much because there's so much flexible hours now. Um, people work all different times within a, a window. So the main thing I concentrate on is the hours per day. Um, so if we say select eight for that, 40 hours a week and then I do the 20 for the working days. Now the next thing I do, percentage complete for assignment, that's fine, it's only that or decimal. So the next thing is the new task created. Now I don't like this manually, select, uh, manually scheduled, I like the auto scheduled. Auto schedule, it does take in all your changes um, directly, whereas manually scheduled, it doesn't. And also manually scheduling, it allows you to treat this area like a notebook, really. You can just write what you like. Um, and I really don't see the point. If you want to make notes about anything, you can set up the notes column. As you can see at the top here, if you can see my cursor here, notes, you can write notes about various things here. Um, so I don't really use the manually scheduled. I like it set to auto. Duration entered in days, that's always fine by me. Work is entered in hours. Now, that is fine. This is what I don't like, fixed units. Now, every project I think I've worked on has always had a deadline. You always got to meet your dates. Um, and fixed units, it will move tasks around. So I like to select fixed duration. Then I have control over my schedule. I have control over those dates. And if I need to 
sort out resourcing and work hours, I will do it myself by smoothing the resources and if, if resources are overloaded in one area I will try and manually smooth the tasks out, move them to the left or the right to try and get rid of the overloads. I like to do I like to have control over that. Otherwise you have to really keep track of where things are moving. Um, so fixed duration is my best task type. Um, now there's various things here, new tasks are effort driven. As you can see, if you look at these eyes here, it will tell you what they are. So this like auto inserted or moved task, so it will automatically link it to the previous task. Split in, in progress task, now that's good. Um, it's good to do that because you might have a slight hold in the work like if, if a resource is not available or, or there's just a delay in it, you haven't increased the work duration of that task but the actual dates might have slipped out so that is a good thing to have selected. I don't do the manually scheduled tasks so that's not applicable. Tasks will always honour their constraints. Now that is an important one to keep. You need to know, you, you, you need to, if you've got constraints in your plan, it's because there's a reason for the constraints to be there. And you shouldn't be putting constraints in if they're not needed. So if you've got a deadline, like there's a, a major design review and you've got to hit that date, that is a constrained date. It must happen on that day. Um, so, the task will always honour that. If you look at this information sign here again, it will tell you here that if there's, it will give you negative slack rather than uh, telling you you can't do it. So here we've got tasks will always honour their constraint dates. Now that is important. If you have constrained dates anywhere, then there's a reason for it. And if there's not a reason for it, they shouldn't be constrained. So it is important that the tasks honour their constraint date and they don't move if, if some other logic earlier on in the plan, any links have um, impacted, you need to know that. Show that tasks scheduled, so that scheduled tasks have their estimated durations well. That's a good idea in that if you set up a new task and it has a question mark by it, it lets you know that you really haven't thought about the duration on that. So it just highlights that you need to revisit that. And I think that is about all that I really do on this. The rest of the defaults seem fine to me. Um, the only other one I tend to go to here is the advanced where it says open last file on startup and you've got so many, um, open last file, you can, you can use that if you like. If you're, if you're only using one project all the time, one project plan, then it may be useful to check that. If you work on multiple, then it might not be worth doing that. Undo levels. Now, this is 29. You can just add or reduce. It depends on, on what you want to set that to. Obviously, the more the better, but it will only obviously undo to your latest save, so your last save. So um, probably save before you get to that level anyway. And the other part that I look at here really, I think there's a number of recent folders, a number of recent projects. So when you open up and you see the, the recent files that you've opened up, once again, if you do a lot, then you might want to make this number big. If you've only got one or two projects you work on, then you might just want to set that to two or three. Um, the other thing here that they have is tasks are critical if slack is less than or equal to zero. Now that is the default and that is correct. Um, the critical path should be that there's no zero, there's no days 
available in Slack um, for your whole project to be impacted. So having zero days there is correct, but sometimes people like to put in a little buffer, um, maybe five days or something, um, so that it puts tasks on the critical, which really are just maybe coming up to the critical. So that's up to you. And also there's another one you may want to put on, which calculate multiple critical paths. So this one will just do the longest path, which is the one that impacts your whole project. And it's the longest path all the way through the project plan. This one will show you all the other little critical paths that there may be within that. So that's how I set up mine. Um, Obviously, it's a, a matter of uh, perspective and such like, but that is how I like mine set up, as I say. And the main thing I like is this fixed duration um, so that I have control over my plan. So I think that is all for now. Um, I will be going over some other areas of Microsoft Project and how I set them up and how I manage like resources with the resource smoothing and items like that. So look out for some of my other videos and uh, until the next time. Thank you.